Today on the show, we have Kenny Trusnick. His company is called Forest City Digital. It's an e-commerce focused marketing shop that helps small and medium businesses scale. And he's had this business now for close to four years. So Kenny, thanks for being on the show today. Yeah, of course. Appreciate you having me, Chad. Definitely. We were just talking about a story from your youth around the wrestling. Could you share that failure and how you overcame it? Yeah, I've had a few of them. I, I wrestled for 16 years. So all the way from the time I was four years old through halfway through college. And I don't know, the sport has always stuck with me and gave me a lot of life lessons. I, I remember wrestling for like a, a little a city team outside of Cleveland called Garfield Heights. And it was just like a small youth program. It wasn't like anything special. I wasn't very good. And I got my first taste of like wrestling in a tournament and facing club kids and getting the crap kicked out of me by one guy. And his name was Randy. It's funny if he actually listens to this, but it's, it, it was funny because I just, I got my face wiped all over the mat and I'm like, okay, me and my dad were like, if you want to do this, let's get better. And so we actually moved to the club that the kid beat me from. And I remember for the first four months of that next season, I don't think I, I won a single match. I, I probably wrestled 80 or 90 wrestling matches. I, I lost my first 60. And then all of a sudden the light bulb clicked and I just, I kept getting back up off the mat, getting back up off the mat after getting the, the snot kicked out of me. And I just learned to pick myself back up and keep moving forward from something like that. It took me about a year for it to click. And then all of a sudden I, I was traveling the country and wrestling national tournaments and beating kids. I probably absolutely shouldn't have been beaten. You know, and that really led into the high school, which this is my, my favorite failure because I was so angry and so pissed off. And I, I remember beating up on this kid at a tournament that my high school team was was winning this tournament in a pool of 50 teams. And we were just running through everybody. And I was beating this kid 13 to one. And I made one little mistake and he caught me and he pinned me. And I was supposed to win the tournament. And I, I remember going to the locker room and I punched a locker till my, my knuckles bled because I was just so upset with myself. And my dad walked in and he said, are you going to keep feeling sorry for yourself? Or are you going to go back out there and beat on the next kid and beat on the next kid, beat on the next kid and pick yourself up and make it all the way back? And I lost that first match, 50 kids in the bracket. And I I, I think I rattled off seven or eight wins where I, I came through and I, I pinned, I teched, I, I just let the emotions channel through and I powered through whatever I was feeling. And I just... I learned to pick myself up and work through that. And that's what I love about the sport of wrestling and professionally, personally, I mean, things come at you. It's just a matter of picking yourself up. I'm sure that experience has kind of led you into business and through the ups and downs of that. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things where wrestling versus I, I played baseball and other sports and stuff, but it teaches you to discipline yourself. And I mean, if you fail, it is on you. But it's up to you to hold yourself accountable and keep moving forward. That's what owning a business is, really. You're constantly putting out fires and solving problems. Absolutely. So in building out this business, has there been a moment where you had to use those skills? And what did that look like? Yeah, I, I, deal, with, I deal with a lot of stuff, owning a business and kind of being a startup mentality. So, I mean, I, I make mistakes all the time. Like as an agency, sometimes you, you bring on what I call a desperate client. Like you get them in just to kind of get a pipeline of cash flow coming in to get things rolling for yourself. And I, I've had a couple of these clients where you know, we'll call them legacy clients. They were there to just start the business and get things rolling and, and kind of get money flowing in so that we can keep reinvesting in the business. And I, I think I learned very quickly that if I don't fire these clients, I'm going to have some very upset crown contractors. The reason why I started a business is so that I can enjoy the people I'm working with and enjoy the things that I'm doing. But if you bring on a client that expects the world on a dime and they're, they're paying, paying you pennies on the dollar per se, it, it's, it's not going to be good for your health mentally. And so I, I think I made the mistake of feeling the urgency of like bringing on clients versus finding good quality clients that want to work with you and build something. And so I think a failure of that was stay, stay calm, be logical in your decisions. And the lesson coming out of it is don't be afraid to fire a client. It's, it's okay to feel uncomfortable for a bit. Do you have a different set of techniques now when you're onboarding somebody? Like onboarding a client, so to yeah, speak? Like deciding is this the right person? I think there's qualifiers. Absolutely. I don't have a standard checklist. 
but a lot of it is I'm looking for fit culturally. That's, that's the most important. And I'm also gauging in, in the proposal process, I'm seeing how much due diligence, even the client does, if they're doing more due diligence and I give them homework to come back to a proposal review, are they actually doing it? Because that tells me a client is actually going to engage with you. I'm looking for a partner. And that's, that's ultimately what makes my clients successful is if they're actively participating. And if they're not going to do that, it's, it's not going to be a win for either of us. Did you decide to focus on e-commerce from day one or did that come with time? That came with time. I've always been in e-commerce and digital marketing. I, I got my start at Toyota and I've worked for other companies like Sherwin Williams. And it wasn't until I moved back to Cleveland when I started at Sherwin Williams that I actually started Forest City as a side gig. It was more of just like general digital marketing and search engine optimization and paid advertising and stuff like that. It was just more of a catch-all. Like I, I need marketing, come help me. And it wasn't until I started at Clum Group and running a lot of operations there where I don't have a passion. I don't, I don't know. I don't play video games or do anything like that. I'm not like an avid gardener that I can build a hobby or build a business around a hobby. My, my passion, so to speak, is e-commerce. And I think in my experience with Clum Group that I'm like, okay, I really just love the e-commerce space in general. And I like helping businesses strategize around scaling. And so that's really how I learned that e-commerce is going to be my focus with Forest City Digital, so. Yeah, I mean, it's a good pick. I've seen a massive amount of growth now. Yeah, a little thing called the pandemic helps, but yeah. at least in our industry, it's not great for everybody, but for e-commerce, it's, it's been a game changer. What would your advice be for new entrepreneurs or, or people thinking about starting their own business? Put everything into it. Don't, don't tiptoe around something. If you're going to invest your time or your energy, your, your effort, your money, don't, don't tiptoe into something. I, I think I made that mistake and why I didn't jump into it sooner. I spent two and a half, three years trying to figure out what I was and investing some money here, spending some time there, but I never really put focus on the business. And so if you're going to really investigate starting a business, jump all in, invest yourself obsess over it for, for a few months to see one, if it's even a fit and two, if it's something that could be viable for you. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great tips. So listen to Kenny on when you're starting or thinking about starting out. So you got to do. So if one of our listeners has an e-commerce company and needs to call you for some marketing help, how can they do so, Kenny? You can visit us at forestcitydigital.net. You can also email us at hello at forestcitydigital.net. We, we have a Calendly link, schedule a time with us anytime. We're even just happy to talk shop if you ever have any questions and want to talk through any problems. Well, thank you, Kenny, for being on the show. And thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki with Cosmic Design and Development. Make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.